Welcome to the Latvian Football Podcast, where in this episode we're going to look at rounds 7 and 8 and see what uh, what happened there. Last time we did a composite episode like that, we kind of organized it around particular teams. We are not going to do this uh, again this time. Instead, we're going to go game by game. So all the games in round 7, followed by all the games in round 8. Some surprises again some not so big surprises some teams still really showing what they're used to used to be showing some teams turning it around a bit so again a lot to discuss and just there's still hasn't been a disappointing game game week as of yet which is really nice i agree it's uh, it's a round that is equally full of surprises and uh, full of teams sort of doing what you would expect them to be doing, uh, certainly before even the start of season. And I think first game of round seven is very much an embodiment of that, where Tukums hosted Leopaya and duly lost 0-3 to them. So Leopaya winning 3-0, 2-0 in halftime, goals by Dodo from a penalty on the 18th minute, Krautman is a very interesting goal on 31st minute, and then an absolute masterpiece by Tiddenbergs on 69th minute. Tukums lined up something along the lines of 4-3-3, uh, where, whereas Liepaja chose uh, a slightly similar formation, 3-4-3. Um, early in the game, a long ball by defender Mate found Anan of Liepe, one-on-one with uh, the Tukums goalkeeper, Vilkovs, uh, who brought the Liepe midfielder down and conceded a penalty. That's the Dodo goal on the 18th minute. On the 31st minute, Liepe took a short corner and then Krautman is crossed the ball into the box towards the far post, and then it was a windy day. The ball just sort of curved itself into the uh, top left corner in a very miraculous goal. Uh, Tukums did show a bit more teeth in second half, but still no real chances, and instead Sidorovs got himself sent off, following a second yellow card, leaving Tukums down to 10 men. And 69th minute, Tiedenberg put a stop to it all, and uh, scored from the right about 25 meters out, and again into the same place as Krautman is did before, top left corner, really no chance for the keeper. Yeah, well, I guess it's not. Even though Liepai won convincingly, which is something they've been lacking, I, I still wouldn't say that they played like very good football or that they were like dominating over Tukums. Tukums sort of held their own, as you said, more so in the second half. But uh, it was clear who the better team was, and it was Liepai. I unfortunately didn't get to see that much of the game, but still feels like signature like their style of play still not really to be seen but at least uh, what you can see is that the players are starting to get to know each other a bit more and i think we're sort of seeing approximately what the final real lineup starting lineup is for them it's definitely been really useful to get tiedenberg's back uh their gag uh, seems that uh, he's their captain for the season and yeah provided an assist and also scored an amazing goal and uh yeah so it <laughs> It's a weird one because we're so much talking about Liepai and not really showing anything, but at the same time, if you look at their results, it's it's surprising surprisingly good. It seems that they will finish the first uh, the first lap of the games and then and then, and then probably the third place, most likely or fourth, which is uh, which is where you would expect them to be before the season, but then at the start of the season not really. Uh, but yeah, in the end, uh, I mean it's very good for them. And also speaking of Sidorovs, getting his uh, second red card of the season already. I don't know what he needs to do. Check himself. Uh, why is he being so aggressive? Uh, second red card that early in the season is uh, definitely not something that usually happens. Tokums, again, they're trying and their team is not bad. Uh, but it just yeah, it just shows that they're still a young team. Hasn't, haven't really found that rhythm yet. 
But um, I think in in the long term they shouldn't uh, be doing that bad, and uh, I don't think they should be the ones finishing last, at least for now. Pretty much just a solid win, but really defined by the incredible goals that you would not normally see. No, no, definitely. And there is not even that much to set the two teams apart. When watching first half, some of the notes I took were that Tukums were nervous on the ball and kind of trying to play long balls, not really working with the ball, and, and Liepa defended well. But uh, I agree with you in a sense, I think that it's not necessarily that Liepe was superior, it's more that Tukums is still not really living up to their potential. And even looking at statistics, uh, possession, Liepe 58% versus 42% for Tukums, 5 shots on target for Liepe versus 1 for Tukums, and 11 shots overall for Liepe versus 6 for Tukums. Yeah, you can see who the stronger team were, but really not by much. Yeah, that's I guess that's pretty much it about that game. Uh, realistically, Liepe did what they have to do, and they won, and uh, I guess we can move on to the next game, which was uh, Daugopoulos against RFS. Convincing 5-0 win for RFS, and I think this is probably the most boring game of the round, and the one that we can, I think least talk about because it was just first of all expected and uh, second of all it was just easy uh, no real battle put up from Dog Opils, which makes sense because they had to play without arguably their best three players which are on loan from RFS that's why they couldn't play without them the team Dog Opils, who up till now have shown teeth to all the big teams just couldn't do anything against RFS they managed some attacks and even some shots on goal but other than that, as convincing as they get, RFS, of course, 5 0, uh, a real shove off from uh, their left back, Petr Maresz, scoring two goals. I think he got an assist as well for all the fantasy players. If someone managed to captain him, I'm so jealous. But uh, yeah, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, but, uh, it's good to see from RFS that they're finally getting some goals in because it was a huge problem up to this game. So that's, I guess, a positive from Dog Apple's standpoint. Just have to hope. Just forget about these games against RFS because they are going to be hard. So yeah, in terms of formations, Dog Apples played a 4-1-4-1. But as I said, they were really defensive and it was hard for them to really go on uh, any serious attacks. For RFS, it was their classic 4-2-3-1. No, no real big changes as well. Uh, they are sort of also... We can see what their so uh, main starting lineup is. And in terms of stati statistics, 20 shots against 7, 10 on target against 3 on target. 62% possession, and just overall a domination by RFS. I agree with you. This wasn't a particularly exciting game. RFS came out, they did their thing. It started off really slow, then just goals kept coming in. Daugopils uh, showed their hospitality by scoring the first one five minutes into the game. There was an RFS break wide right flank. Iconex crossed to Illich, who crossed it further to Emerson, but uh, this was intercepted by Tsutsurs right into, well, right into his own goal from quite a distance away. That was a bit strange to see. There's quite quite a bit of power in that interception. Then RFS continued to press. Uh, Iconex attempted some overhead bicycle kicks that were saved. Well, one, not plural, so don't know why I pluralized that, but so one overhead bicycle kick. But not the first one this season, so maybe that's why. Still yet to score, though. Then Nagasawa came on for Zuzins in second half, and after some quick passing, dropped the ball to Maresh, who, who made it 3-0. Uh, uh, Before that, Econix did score to make it 2-0. A similar cross from the left coming in to earn Zelenkovs his first um, top-flight goal and make it 4-0 for RFS, and then on 81st minute again, Econex dropped the ball to Maris, the RFS left uh, wing-back, who scored his second, as you said, two goals and one assist in this game, Maris currently being the top scorer for RFS, which I think says quite a lot. In this game, RFS continued their uh, excellent defensive display, not conceding any, any goals from open play, um, although, you know, Jumping a little bit ahead, that didn't hold for another round. But in terms of this particular game, really predictable. Uh, good to see some goals, but not an outcome that was in any doubt for anyone, I think. Yeah, exactly. And uh, 
yeah, I like how you just sort of brushed over the fact that Econix finally scored. Uh, scored and assisted. Yeah, finally did what he's expected to do, but I think this is the game where I, I want to see least that from him, because it doesn't really matter in this game. Realistically, it, it, it was predictable that Terrafes are going to win. They did that, they move on, and uh, yeah, I, 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 I hope Econix finds his confidence more, but still lacking, still not seeing the quality that he should be showing. Arguably one of the best Latvian players at the moment. Well, on paper, but not really showing it. So that's, I guess, a negative, but just a convincing win. And another clean sheet for RFS. I think this was their uh, virtually good record for clean sheets in a row. So five clean sheets in a row, done by the unlikely first goalkeeper, Nervgals, in place for Steinbors. So that's uh, yeah, good for him. And uh, that's, I guess, that's the game. Yeah, yeah, the theme park is still there, still looking interesting. But, Amazing. Uh, I mean, what can you expect? You take off uh, almost a third of the starting lineup for Daugopils and you pit them against one of the strongest teams in Virsliga for a number of years running. I mean, yeah, they tried some things, but in essence, they were they had no attacking players left. And in the press conference, the assistant coach even said that they considered their team medic. <laughs> I as, saw that. you know for an attacking position because th th that's just how bad it was that Lizanovs, the their attack lead is owned by RFS uh, Diomande who's been starting and scoring for them also owned by RFS and then uh, one of the most uh, interesting players to to see this season um, Jaleko midfielder also owned by RFS also can't start so really take away the the cutting edge of uh, Daugopil's attack and well there's very little they can do which is what we saw yeah true so they are really crucial players but then again it makes them more exciting to watch other games which are not against RFS and also good for RFS good prospects for a future also quite an off topic thing but uh, I remember the one I was uh, watching uh, the Daugopil's game and uh, I don't know why I sort of realized that of all the stadiums that are currently being played at, so the artificial stadiums, Daugopils somehow look the best to me. I don't know why, but it's just not only because of the backdrop of the theme park, but also sort of the seats, the sort of bit of a roof and the way that the banners are placed. I just don't know why I thought it seems to me like sort of lower leagues of English football sort of vibes. A random thought, but it just, just looks nice, yeah. The building of the Olympic Center, that's... Uh behind the, the what would be like left hand side of the field right hand side uh it, it's very nice it has this uh, wave style uh, window kind of a uh, row it's it's nice i agree i agree completely and i think it's even nicer comparing to where dago pills used to play <laughs> which was a very kind of a steampunk dystopian semi falling apart stadium that everyone really liked for some reason yeah. but i just found it embarrassing i definitely would encourage people to have a look at it it's called stadium esplanade if you can sort of spell that out uh yeah it's just incredible a very soviet looking stadium and rightly so no no no. that's esplanade is where they're playing now you they used to play i am sorry Celtics. Celtics. i'm sorry Celtics. exactly i'm sorry yeah Already got them mixed up. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's a kind of place where you know you would you would consider as a as a uh, movie set for like a series like Chernobyl or something. It's just yeah. I don't know who was felt it's a good idea to bring any foreign players there. But whenever one of the top teams like Riga would be visiting, and when Torsten Fink was uh, who is now rumored with a move to the Scottish Hearts would be visiting, it was just like. The face palm, like oh no, <laughs> this is this is just not good. Surely there's a better place, and there is Esplanade, but it was under reconstruction, so they couldn't have played back then. Okay, then I guess we move on to the next game, Yalgava against Auda, which was a very interesting one. Two red cards for Auda. First one being very early on in the eleventh minute uh, by Douglas Berquist, the Swedish center back. So most of the game, Auda were. One man down. In the 83rd minute, there were even two men, uh, men down because of a uh, record for Mikulic. And somehow they managed to get a 
goalless draw out of the game, which interestingly enough, I think was, I think both teams can be unhappy with the result because uh, in the beginning, Yalgava looked good and they were getting some counterattacks in and at the start, they're sort of trying to use their man advantage. But in the second half, somehow Auda looked even better with the, with the man down and also attacked and uh, got some chances. And uh, yeah, interestingly enough, both teams can be disappointed with the goalless draw. It is, it is. Yelgava, no shots on target in this game. That was very interesting, especially that uh, it's it was a home game for them, where thus far they've done really, really well. And Auda just continue to hog the ball and not do much with it. They're they're playing this very uh, Spain versus Morocco kind of football where they just keep it, don't do anything with it, and don't let the other team do anything with it. it was less evident in this game as possession uh, sort of doesn't look as skewed as the game appeared to be. But that just seems to be what Auda is doing at the moment. And Valakari in the press conference did admit that Auda are struggling with that key pass to in the final third, the, the last pass that would set up a, an, an attacker to do something dangerous. They're just not, not gelling. Um, they're not quite there yet. And it seems like he's not really sure why, given the quality of his players. But, but there we go. Auda as of this game, only scored once in previous 450 minutes of play. Stunning. Yeah, something really lacking in their attack. Yeah, I just don't know why, because they're keeping the ball well, and the quality of players is good. Yeah, just can't seem to get that break in the final third. Uh, but same for Yalga with this, uh, this game. As you said, zero goals on target. Uh, shots on target, I mean. Which, uh, against uh, a team with the, in the end, even two men down very disappointing and uh, after the second red card they were really pushing it and didn't really also get these breakthroughs and chances which disappointing because they did play well and uh, as you said in home at home they usually do well and uh, yeah it seems that they are also starting to get this sort of a little bit of this odd disease that they also seem to lately be struggling with these final passes and the sort of finishing the attacks off. But uh, also, Aud had some chances and in the end. Interesting, but uh, nil-nil. Both can be disappointed or happy. A bit disappointing about the red cards because it was. I was really curious to see whether Yalgava can beat Aud or, or not. Uh, because uh, even until the red card, Yalgava looked quite good. And uh, I don't know, it, it feels weird to say, but I think if there were no red cards, Yalgava would even... <laughs> Like stand a higher chance of winning for some reason, but yeah, it seems that whenever something out of the normal happens, Yago seem to be struggling a bit. It seems to not be that uncommon for Virsliga, where teams once they um, start playing majority, they kind of don't do as well as if they were equal. I don't know. And then once teams go down to you know ten nine men, they they find it in themselves to fight extra hard, which is strange, and, and it really does beg the question of, well, what's being held back and why? Why why can't we have, you know, games that are 10-20% more exciting with, uh, you know, 11 v 11? After that game, all I could think of was just interesting to see what I would do next without the two uh, of the three main center backs. And uh, yeah, and I was also hoping just Yalga would just forget this game and next game show that they can score and win again. Uh, but yeah, I, as as this is really now I think a trend with me. I again just specifically this one player from Aldisayos again, just how did he manage to keep a clean sheet with with two of his main uh, partners missing in the in this in in the in the center back uh, not partnership but trio. Just yeah, the level of of his uh, of his of his football this season is just amazing to see. Uh, definitely my top three players so far this season. I know I mention this every game, but it, it, I just have to because he keeps being so good. Well, Dennis Kazakevich, the national team coach, was in the stands. He was in the attendance, so maybe we'll see come June if he's gonna get called up. Unfortunately, he was also. There, when the uh, Cisayos broke the rules of under 21s 
so many years ago, which is probably why we won't see him there. But I hope that uh, Dines can work his way around his ethical beliefs. Yeah, well, next game, um, it was no surprise to anyone this time. Supernova Salaspils hosting Riga and Yuli losing uh, 4-0 to them. Uh, two goals scored in first half, two more in second half, and quite early as well. Ngen scored in 8th minute, Soisolo in 21st, Aurelian 62nd, and then Dashkevich on 90th. Really poor defensive positioning by Supernova led to two first goals, which was surprising to see given how they performed against Valmira in the previous round. Uh, then Regja providing an incisive pass to Nguyen, who scored bottom left in this eighth minute. 21st minute, an individual effort by Soisalo from the right flank. It was also very good to see a great display of individual skill. Many more chances for Riga before halftime, but didn't score. Continued to dominate after the break and earned a penalty in the 62nd minute, which keeper did save, but Aurelio was first to the rebound uh, off the post and uh, made it 3 for Riga. Dashkevich um, came on for Aurelio in 69th minute, hit a crossbar, and then also eventually scored from in front of goal in the 90th minute. He's, uh, he's looking really good, I must say. I'm I'm very happy. Uh, it's still a little bit nervous looking, or maybe a little bit hyped whenever he comes on. Uh, but uh, it's it's good to see there's a clear trajectory of development for this young, very, uh, even in the words of Thomas Stipic, unorthodox Latvian player. I think he he said that he has a little bit of uh, Brazilian in him, a little bit of uh, Italian, and a little bit of Latvian. That he's uh, very determined, very technical. Uh, also very disciplined, so hopefully he can really open up under Stipich and uh, we'll see uh, something very exciting. By the way, I think he was not in Italy, but uh, he played for uh, in Belgium for Anderlecht youth teams, but still not sure what was the third personality that uh, Stipich mentioned, but uh, either way, uh, yes, a very good player, well, ever more so exciting because he's a Latvian. And uh, another uh, Latvian that's nice to see sort of starting to play even better and better is Regja, but uh, I'll guess I'll comment more on that uh, when we cover the other Riga game. Uh, but yeah, what's another uh, interesting thing about this game is is the stats. I think I think I can... I didn't really check that confidently, uh, but I think we say that this is probably the Record for Virs League for shots uh, made in a single game. Riga made 46 shots <laughs> and 12 of them on target, while Supernova only managed two with none on target, uh, which is incredible statistics. And uh, just not sure how can you let someone shoot that much, especially in Virs League. Of course, the teams are incomparable in terms of, I don't know, budget and uh, level, level of players that they have, but Still, Supernova should be doing better than that, and sort of it all made sense later on in the press conference when the Supernova coach Kalinko said some words. Um, and uh, also for the next game, Supernova's game that we will cover, uh, just yeah, some harsh words said by the by the coach. Uh, but yeah, just they couldn't really do anything against them. It was evident they had pretty much no chance and. Well, that's the result. 4-0, convincing from Riga, as it should be. And uh, yeah, other than the stats and some nice displays, for example, from Dashkevich, also quite a boring and an uneventful and predictable game, I guess. Yeah, a very lopsided display by Riga, which is something uh, we can't say for next game, where Meta hosted Valmira, and uh, Valmira just about scraped three points out of that game, scoring in the 64th minute. Very even game, very just a very even struggle. I mean, even even looking at uh, stats, Meta actually had uh, more possession than than Valmira. Exactly equal amount of shots, 13 each. Three shots on target for Meta, only one for Valmira which is also the goal, a very equal display by both teams, which is not something that you would think looking at uh, the, the 
the game that's uh, entitled Meta versus Valmir. Meta just did look a better team, and Valmir can be really uh, lucky with the point. I really liked what uh, Meta's coach Andres Richard said in the press conference about this game uh, that Meta created and Valmir broke up their creation. Not really sure how to say it. Pretty much, yeah, just Meta were trying to create, they were playing some good football, and Valmir just, yeah, sort of got these last tackles in, intercepted, intercepted the ball, uh, whatever. But when they were on the ball, they didn't really do anything that good with it. Yeah, they had some shots, most of them on off target. One lucky goal uh, went in, and uh, I, I think props uh, to Jansems for that. I think he's been one of the few players that's been looking a bit better than others for Valmir, so showing his leadership, together with uh, their captain Balwadis, who created the goal. So yeah, Jansems got the rebound from a corner, went to the right side, crossed it in, and um, Balwadis uh, was the first to the ball, getting in front of Norman Soldrich's Meta defender, who, by the way, his first game back from an injury, which is good to see. But uh, yeah, I think Meta definitely deserved at least a point from this game. They looked good. They've been looking good this season, especially the two players in the center, Vapne and So. And uh, yeah, and it's also good to see that Meta can also sort of do some rotation of the squad because in the first games, I think they didn't really have that many options. But now it seems that there's a lot of players that can sort of come on and uh, or start on the bench, for example, Shibas, and uh, the fact that you know we can bench Kurtz and he can come on. Same with the uh, Reyes, and uh, I guess that's good that there's even some depth to Meta, which I think usually is a problem for them. Uh, so I think, like moving on, they're probably gonna look fine and do do all right this season. Uh, they've already surprised me and many others, and I, I think they will be fine and a bit unlucky for them uh, this game. I agree. Meta looking very good. I would even go as far as to say that uh, they should have taken all three points in this one. Certainly A for the effort. And that was round seven. Some interesting games, a couple of just very one-sided matches, but also some some good fights. Uh, Moving on to round eight. Uh, This kicked off with Liepaja hosting Daugavpils. Daugavpils... uh, had their RFS players back, Diomande, Lizunov, and Jaleko, and Liepaja won 1-0, which uh, to me seemed like a fairly equal game, certainly up until the very end of the first half, when Diomande forgot that he's a football player and decided to live up to his UFC ambitions and just smacked a Liepaja player on the face with side of fist or something and uh, and got sent off leaving Daugo pills one man down uh, thereafter possession very much in favor of Liepaja uh, more dangerous situations Daugo pills still showing teeth but not really able to do much with it very poor passing accuracy very much just trying to survive and not being uh, overly successful at that with uh, Nino Nordanus finally scoring for Liepaja on the 76th minute and also Dodo missed the penalty after the goal. So could have been a bit more of a convincing win for Liepai. But yeah, 1-0. And uh, yeah, it was disappointing because after the RFS game, I wanted Dogopoulos to do good because with their RFS loanies, they are looking very good. And uh, they did look good against Dogopoulos up until the red card. And so frustrating because I always think that how can a player sort of do something like that in the, in the game and just be a complete disappointment to the whole team and let them down uh, because it was it wasn't like a necessary red card it wasn't like a last ditch tackle or two yellows it was just an unnecessary aggressive action by him and uh, he knew what he was doing and uh, i know it's all in the head and in the mentality but yeah, it's just sort of a bit off topic for me but just very frustrating to see how can players let their team down so easily by doing such silly fouls but on the other hand um I guess one little positive from this episode is that I think so far uh, VAR is proving to be quite good in uh, in Latvia. Uh, this call was made by the VAR, and uh, it was the right call. And uh, uh, yeah, that's that's that is at least good to see. Sad because Liepa, uh, Daugavpils could have gotten much more out of the game. Yeah, in the end, they're just helping Liepai to do this very illogical run, getting some wins and good results together, and uh, they're. 
as I said, they're going to finish surprisingly good the first lap. And uh, yeah, just pretty much the amount the amount that helped them do that. Also, I was surprised to see Nordanos to score. And also, it was a good goal. Up till now, he's been sort of mostly coming on, really not showing anything. But here, out of nowhere, he just... I think, well, defenders sort of let him have too much space with it because the way he sort of turned with the ball and had the shot off, well, you really would not be allowed that normally in football. But still, a uh, good goal from him. We're probably, I guess, starting to prove, well, not prove people wrong, prove themselves right, I guess. Yeah, I agree on VAR completely, and the penalty was determined by VAR as well. Certainly it would be good to have it at more games. Still unclear why it's only one game per round, even when the matches are played on different days. But uh, probably it's just still in this trial slash training period. But uh, there is certainly another game in this round that would have greatly benefited from VAR. We will get to that shortly. About the red card, I, I mean, I agree. It wasn't anything. It was just some short pulling. And then he just decided to go and wrestle the, the opponent down for, for no reason. Then you say, like, well, how can a player let their team down like that? Which is true. But then again, you know, Dagopils is not the Amandes team, right? Our RFS is. So maybe it's a little bit uh, less of a conundrum for him. I don't know what's going on in his, uh, in his head. He's very young still, even though he doesn't look like it. I think he's only like 18 or, or 19 tops. But um, yeah, Leipzig continue, as you said, on a little bit of a run. I'm not super clear why we're necessarily uh, treating this as uh, them defying expectations. Because in previous seasons, this is exactly what one would expect. But then again, how they were last season, well, you, you can just see the damage done by frequent coach rotations and the very questionable transfer policy. So now they are, are, are the underdogs, whereas uh, in the past would be very much a top four team. But still, they're catching up and still have a game in hand, so they can go even higher. I guess that's the game, and we can move on to the next one, which was a surprising one, at least for me. Uh, Auda against Tukums. Tukums won 3 0, and uh, <laughs> well, I think this was, well, not against all odds, but. Uh, a 3-0 victory, I don't think anyone expected from Tukums this game. Uh, I think there's a lot of positives for Tukums because I think their starting lineup was a bit different than usual. I think they had a bit more young players in than usual, which turned out to be a well, very good decision because two of them ended up scoring. Meltis and Puzanos uh, scored. Also, another lone player from RFS, Stefanovic, scored 3-0. And uh, it's a very interesting game because I think how the didn't again they didn't look bad they just sort of got hit on the counters and that's exactly how Tukums wanted to play and they managed to carry out their plan score three and how they just uh the, the this dry period for them is just keeping on and i think it's even getting too much because they had many chances and good ones as well when we, uh, well speaking of that we i really have to give a shout out to Tukums goalkeeper Sergei Silkos couple of incredible saves this game denied uh, I remembered he denied Isayevs uh, after a good header and also Minkiewicz had a rebound uh, I, I, I liked the real snippet that the Latin journalist that Musnowitskis made of this game he said that if you haven't watched this game just look at these 8 second snippets from the press conferences where uh, Simo Alakari said we created the chances, we created the chances we created the chances and then Tukov's uh, coach said uh, it's good that we scored three goals, and that's pretty much it. I would have attacked a lot, but just can't find the final, final touch, the 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 the, the break to to get the goal. And I don't know what's going on with them and what they have to do. Maybe have to go to church, leave a candle there. I'm not sure, but it must be very frustrating for them. Yeah, still lacking that uh, key pass, and uh, Tukum's very much playing counter attacks, as you said in this game. With only 28% possession, they managed to score three inside of 20 minutes. And uh, those were some good goals as well. The, the one by Meltis is... I, I really enjoyed it. Um, others also very nice. They somehow managed to get more shots on target than Aude. Although six for Tukums versus five for Aude. 
uh, although Alda having a significant advantage in overall shots, which is 27 versus 11. Again, Alda keeping the ball, again, not really being able to do all that much with it. Question is, how long can this uh, keep going on? Are they just gonna play this possession heavy but toothless football or are, are you know are the floodgates finally gonna break down and uh, they're gonna start converting their their ball ownership into many many goals almost seems as if it's a bit of a shame that it wasn't like some attacking players that got the red cards against the Algava because it seems that like they could like really use a break and just skip a game and then come back and just go off because I think defensively I, I'm sure that Berkvist and Mikulic for the next game when they will be able to play uh, they will be as, as angry as ever and trying to do everything but they're defenders and uh, if this mentality was also there up top I think that's what they really need but defenders can't do anything I think some players like the one I mentioned already Sayos must be mentally exhausted because of the amounts of physical work he had to do previous game with two red guards and now without his usual uh, center back partnerships. Not really sure what to do without. I think the goalkeeper was also a bit disapp- the, well, yeah, disappointing this game. Ondoa probably should have uh, kept out at least two of those goals. Yeah, Stepanovic is nice finish, but just over the hands of Ondoa from a quite a tight angle with his weaker foot, also, I believe. And yeah, but Tukums then, yeah, he just got lucky, as you said. The possession was twenty eight percent, right? Yeah. How can you score three goals from that? Well, you just and, you uh, just again, get just... the ball and and you put it in the net, which is something that so many Vers Liga teams are, Tukums included, up until this game are struggling with, just the realization. Yeah, and uh, again, now they're just keeping the ball that they can do incredibly well, probably the best in the league. Oh yeah, but by by some margin. Not not scored. Yeah, I think uh, maybe they're playing too much. Uh, rondos in their trainings and I think they should just just say everyone take the ball and just shoot it shoot it at the goal and try and score because I'm not sure what else they can do it seems like just they just want to do Barcelona and just play to into an empty net uh, but it's it's not gonna slide they have to do better and seeing the quality they have on the ball it's frustrating to see them not scoring because they could be so much better and I think they could be trying to challenge Riga, Aude, Malmir for the top spots. Uh, I'm sorry, Riga, Refes, Malmir. But... Something noteworthy is that On Doa is still in goal. In the beginning of the season, we kept wondering uh, when is he going to show up, that Ozols kept uh, kept being picked as the main goalkeeper for Aude up until the game versus Riga. But since then, it's just been On Doa. And he hasn't been that convincing either. Certainly not Nothing um, like what we've seen from him last season, where where he was extremely impressive. Now many errors. Not uh, you said the the goal by Stepanovic. He really should have saved that. A tight angle right over him. So then that that's another question with Alda. Well, why not put Ozols back? You know, maybe at least you'll still not score. Although I don't know. Maybe maybe Ozols will come out and. And, and start scoring headers off corner kicks or something, but but at least not concede such uh, such efforts. Uh, and then you said, well, you know, their their scorers don't score. Well, okay, well, we have RFS as a case study example where top scorer is a left wing back. So you know, don't don't let your position define your <laughs> top goal scorer ambitions. Point point being that Auda really should be scoring at least something at this point by someone anyone please yeah i'm willing to bet that was also be in the goal for the next game i think i thought he he should be in in this game after the, the game before after the game in round seven and it's on the wall again well we'll see we'll see what all they can come up with because they really need to come up with something they can't keep up like this yep the next game in this round was Valmira hosting Yelgava, which we were hoping would go for Yelgava, given how Valmira have been performing unevenly, but uh, it didn't. No surprises here. Valmira getting a 2-0 win, even though, again, more possession for their opponents. 
So meta out possessed uh, Valmira in in the previous round, and now even Yelgava keeping the ball 53% of the time. Really not much difference in terms of shots and shots on target. 13 for Yelgova versus 16 for Valmira, and then 7 on target for Yelgova versus 9 for Valmira. Um, really not that much difference in terms of other attributes either, other than Valmira scored two goals. A lovely strike um, from the center by Jaunzems, and then a wonderful breakaway by Pulis. Both goals first half. And then Yelgova couldn't recover. Really frustrating with Yelgova because they're showing that they can put up a good fight against the bigger teams. And this was no no different. At the start of the game, they were dominating. Uh, they had the ball. They were keeping the ball. They had some chances. They created a lot. At some points, I couldn't even recognize Valmir. They just didn't seem to know what they are really doing. Uh, but then they uh, got their breaks. Uh, with the Aunzem scoring a, a very nice goal, sent three players to the shops, and then a nice finish. And then Pools, which was a bit of a weird goal, because I think Algova players were sort of expecting a foul, and they stopped for a bit, and then just somehow Pools got the ball. I think it was uh, the left back Paul who was really sort of switched on and just didn't stop and gave a pass, and Pools just finished. Well, the Algova players were still, I think, anticipating, a, I think, a whistle from the ref. A bit of a weird one, but uh, still. Maybe shows a bit lack of experience more than anything else. Yeah, uh, that's a good point, yeah. But it is a bit disappointing because they had chances in the first half. I think Laudans had a good shot which also saved, uh, which was which came from sort of a nice build-up play from Yalgava. But well, Valmir defended well. Yeah, managed to get the win out of the game. Which is, yeah, and well, it's good for them because I think they need it whatever the problems they're having are. Sort of behind-the-scenes problems, I mean. I hope they work out. But yeah, Yalgo can be disappointed because, again, they just could have gotten more out of this game with a bit of luck and, I guess, the yeah, experience came into play at this time. I think the sort of the second goal broke them a bit and it was harder to come back in the game after that. But at least they're still showing good signs and playing good football. And uh, Yeah, but the only thing I'm... I'm, I, I I said this as a compliment last time, but now I'm starting to get a, maybe a bit worried about the sort of the rotation, the amount of rotation that Yalga uh, are doing. I'm not sure how can how much can players really sort of get a, get in a good form or get a real like taste and feeling of of of, of proper Vish league when it's mid season if they keep if they keep up switching that uh, the players up that much uh, because it, it's 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 tough when you're not playing regularly. But at the same time, maybe with young players, it's not the case as Perkins has said previously. Sometimes they're sort of emotionally not really there. It doesn't excite them anymore, and that's when you bring the players who are not playing in. I'm not sure, but I I would like to see a bit more consistency because it's always hard to predict the squad that the Algar are going to put up. Balmer still, even though they scored two goals, struggling to, struggling to find their main attacking outlet. Uh, I don't think Pulis is going to be that this season. Gibril Gay should have been that, but he's out for the season, as is Varslavans, unfortunately. So, very unlucky. But, um, yeah, I heard a good comment that considering last season when Valmir were crowned the champions, they went on the, uh, the whole season without pretty much any serious injuries, specifically no major injuries to the main players. And, uh, yeah, considering that maybe this is how football balances out. Now it's when the uh, weights go the other way. Uh, which is unfortunate, but well, that that's part of the game, and they have to work on that. Uh, but good victory for them. A bit disappointing for Yago. For me, it's it's sad to see. I, I as it's known, I like them. Same as Met, I think Yago is going to be fine, considering it's their first season in this league, and uh, how young the players are. I think they will be fine, and I hope they get more wins and uh, and get points off the big teams as well. No, Yago well, looking good. We shouldn't get too rosy-eyed with their uh, fighting spirits. Um, obviously, they're still an underdog, and for a good reason. Uh, about rotation, I I kind of tend to agree with you, but again, even now, they start looking a little bit tired, maybe more emotionally than physically, and uh, pressure of um, faster, more punishing Virs League of football 
relative to what they were doing in uh, in one division down and second division uh, is probably taking its toll and then some comments by Perkons, their coach about well they the players uh, you know in order to take the next step they they don't just need to be playing football they also need to start becoming scholars of the game and watching other teams play and analyzing and just this mental component can be challenging i, I would imagine that the elgo squad is probably less professional than not so many uh, probably have you know university uh, maybe school studies on top of, of this so it can be can be demanding and in terms of Valmir, I, I mean, they started the season really rocky, but now they're in third place. So even even though they're by no means showing the same level of achievement and quality of football as they shown last year, they're not doing bad, all things considered. The, nothing's lost for them, still everything to gain. Next couple of games are going to be very challenging, but uh, well, in terms of uh, their performance in the in the first uh, circuit, which uh, which completes next round, they've done okay. They they haven't blown it. They they haven't uh, crushed it as maybe we expected them to. But uh, but they're fine. So certainly still in the race for the championship, if that is indeed what they want to achieve, which is the, one of these cryptic things that. Jurgis Kahn's keep saying that, uh, you know, nobody ever said that retaining championship is their uh, goal, which I don't buy, but, you know. And, uh, yeah, okay, we move on to the next game. Uh, another interesting one, RFS against Supernova. A 2-1 victory for RFS, although there were moments when uh, it was a bit shaky for them. They started the game off well. Uh, managed to get a very early penalty goal uh, by Ilic. Um, and then a very unfortunate turn of events as their goalkeeper, Njerogals, who is the one who has been keeping the clean sheets, uh, being the unlikely first goalkeeper of the team, got a red card. Unfortunately, didn't really manage to see the situation, but as I understand, it was a bit of a controversial one, was it? Yeah, I don't think he... So what happened was that um, um, Markiev the defensive midfielder who's by the way excellent and, and definitely one to watch this season had this brief stretch of maybe like 15 20 minutes where he just uh, fell apart a little bit and he was d- making a back pass um but he kind of miss uh, kicked the ball and was a bit too weak and essentially it was picked up by a supernova um attacker i think vishnikovs but i'm not sure uh, Nerogals uh, came out uh, to intercept the ball and uh, he said he played with his face um, but the ref um, uh, determined that it was a handball and so straight red. It was uh, halfway down RFS uh, part of field so nowhere near the, the penalty box. Once that happened there was a bit of deliberation once Nerogals he, he already left to the dressing rooms, but then the fourth ref kind of, I guess, questioned the decision, so there was a bit of a pause for deliberation, and uh, uh, Victor Smoros became very unhappy with that, yelling something along the lines of, well, you d- decide first and then show the red card, but the red card stood, there was no VAR to consider it, uh, replay is inconclusive because the camera is behind Nerogal, so you can't really see what part of him the ball hit it could have been one of his arms maybe the left one that that is uh, obstructed from you for for us where where the cameras are uh, i haven't seen any videos from the stands posted anywhere that that could show you know any kind of mobile phone footage uh, as well that you know why would anyone film this very random episode in, in the middle of uh, of the game but but uh, yeah he got sent off supernova got an indirect free kick uh, which was um, which was converted into a goal far post header by Dennis Rakels and yeah thus uh, RFS conceded their first game from play since you know the season in, in this very odd very bizarre episode. Well, not really. It's still from the play. It's still from like a, a free kick, but well, it's not a penalty. Not a penalty right? in that sense, yeah. In that sense, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Steinbors back in goal after this incident as well, and yeah. Half ended one one, 
so a bit shaky times. It was very dramatic because the game started off, even the weather was very reflective of the mood in the stadium. I, I couldn't attend, although I was very, very close to being able to. In the end, I'm glad I didn't, mainly weather, meteorological reasons, but essentially the game started off with complete and utter dominance by RFS, just rolling the ball, combining well, you know, scoring that early penalty, which Nagasawa earned. Really nothing to suggest that it's not going to be another, you know, game versus Dago Pills. So it very much seemed like it's just a matter of time until RFS are gonna score second, third, fourth, maybe fifth goal. No big deal. Kind of a friendly vibe. And then this happens. The sky... And it was sunny and a nice, nice evening. But then the sky closes up. It starts raining. Supernova uh, score the goal. And uh, RFS are down to 10 men. And uh, it just... It really was not evident at all that they're going to win. And possibly even they... they you know, there were a couple of chances where you would think that Supernova should have, might have scored, making life very unpleasant for RFS. Even despite 23 shots for RFS, still very poor accuracy, six shots on target. Uh, they did dominate second half, but taking very significant risks, basically playing without defense. Even Lipushek, central defender, was playing so up the field that, uh, you know, you would think that he's an attacking midfielder or even like a number nine or something, if you were looking at it uh, without knowing who is who. So very, very much of a, you know, a squeaky bum time kind of a game, a real nail biter. But um, yeah, in the end, Lipushek scored header of a corner kick, I think it was, or or another indirect set piece from Salonex. And yeah, real Linfield vibes. From last season, where it's just another late game goal that, uh, well, in that case, draws the game. In this case, wins the game uh, by uh, central defender for RFS. I have to say, comparing this to Linfield is a bit embarrassing for RFS in this instance because Supernova is no <laughs> no Linfield, and the man, the fact that they had to struggle like this, definitely not a good sign. But on the other hand, uh, the topic we already touched upon: teams not knowing how to play. Uh, when they have a man advantage. Uh, I think the same went for Supernova. They didn't really know how to use it. And I guess it wasn't, it wasn't bad. Like They had chances, as you said, but uh, still RFS were with the ball most of the time. And uh, sometimes even very uh, stubbornly just going and attack. Like As you said, Lipushek was finding himself in the attacking positions more than I think he should as a defender. And uh, even defenders that we're still at the, well, at the back of the field, or pushing quite high. And uh, if Supernova thought better, they they should have punished them for playing that high and risky. But well, that's the problem with them, and I guess with with, with not knowing what to do in the situation. And uh, yeah, in the end, managed to to lose the game. Good to see Savalinex back, uh, a sister for the second goal. He's been out with an injury for quite some time, but uh, I think one of the best. Also, Latvian players at the moment, convincingly, the choice, the choice for the right back uh, for the national team, and it's just always a solid, solid performer. Good to see him back. Also, good to see Rakels for Supernova being, I think, like the only one that's trying so much for the team and just running everywhere and pushing himself. Uh, it's evident that he well, doesn't want to play in Supernova. Well, all due respect, that but he is a better player than. That supernova level, but yeah, as as Kolinko very harshly said in the press conference after, the young players just seem to not want to be there, uh, their minds elsewhere in I don't know studies or jobs or whatever. And uh, this was again another harsh press conference by him, pretty much just slating his players. And it's a weird one because they managed like a good result against Valmir, but then again, not so good results now. And harsh words from the coach, and I can't imagine players being happy with it. It's just a weird situation at the club, at least from outside. It's 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 looking that way. It will be interesting to see, but I I guess quite likely Kolinkov could be the first coach to go uh, this season. But yeah, also RFS should have probably done better. Also making some changes. Wash coming in, and uh, Nagasawa starting. Uh, he looked good. Wash also didn't look bad, but at some point. Moros realized he needed, 
Yeah, Godinski's in there as well. I think also Emerson hasn't been really up to his standards this season. I'm not sure what's up with him. I think we're used to seeing more from him. Probably the the one of the best players in the Vis League. I'm not sure. Still RFS are getting the wins, but still not 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 that convincing and not sure why, how, because they are a solid team. But really looking forward to the next uh, Riga derby without an early red card and then seeing who is the real deal this season. Yeah, well, it's it's that and it's also this issue that uh, RFS have, that Alda has, that uh, Riga has, that they generate lots of shots on goal, or well, lots of shots, fewer shots on goal, and it's just the efficiency of attacking moves is, is very poor. And that's not something that you see in in top leagues. There, you know, you you have to take chances that you you make, and and here there's it's it's a lot more liberal. There's it's a lot more wasteful. Can you imagine top three European league with stats like that, where you have like with Riga almost fifty shots on goal and only four goals scored? Is it's just and I don't know what it is. Is it the quality of forwards? Is it? Uh, is it? What is it? But uh, that's definitely something that's not not great to see. And, and I think that is something that really, really needs to be fixed in order for Virsliga to take that next step. It needs to be more clinical. It needs to be more efficient. Uh, can't be this wasteful. With RFS as well, just this game, it shouldn't have been this close. Even if they're down one man, maybe even two, they they just dragged Supernova through the mud in second half. It was very very impressive, very stubborn, very determined attacking effort by the whole team, and they just managed to squeeze one out off a set piece in the end. It really shouldn't have been the case. In terms of Kalinko's comments, there's a real vibe of Supernova being the sinking ship, and he's just yelling at the ship. You know. I, I still hold by the conspiracy theory that I offered a few episodes back that players are trying to push him out, but maybe it's a little bit simpler than that. Maybe it's just the atmosphere is becoming so dreadful in that team that they don't really want to to play or something. But yeah, essentially, again, um, reaffirming that his team is terrible, saying that defenders don't know how to play, that they have and I quote, a body part that is larger than that of a coach. Don't know what exactly he was referring to, but so far his biggest body part appears to be his mouth. It's just, it doesn't seem like a good place to be. So no wonder the, the youngsters in the team are are unenthusiastic, uh, which is very unfortunate, very unfortunate. But, um, but um, here we are. I, I think he will be the first to go. Now there's some concerns about Valakari on my end. Maybe he will be sacked as well, given the results for Alda, but um, Supernova is just... its This is not sustainable for them, both on, on the field and in the dressing room. It just looks very bad. Yeah. Uh, in terms of Alakari, I think he's been the unfortunate one because team's not been playing bad. And also, he's proven his previous teams, which are not bad teams. Well, Coops for Finland, one of the top teams in Finland, and he... he he did well with them so I don't think he will be let go but he needs time and his players to score pretty much I don't know how much you can put that on him but uh, yeah it seems that Supernova just as you said bad place to be I think that Kodinko's methods are just a bit too old uh, just yelling players and doing them dirty and of course they get a bit intimidated by that and they are less likely to want to try and play like the center backs are not willing to get the ball from the keeper and then passing it to Lysans in the midfield because the center backs don't want to do a mistake and they just blew it up the field. And uh, yeah, that's why it just it doesn't seem to gel his style of coaching and the style of players that they have. And yeah, it's just probably time to go because if he's putting his team down that bad, then why is he coaching them? If there's nothing to work with, just don't work. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Leave and... Uh, yeah, which is bizarre yeah. because they did so well with him when he just joined last season. That's when Supernova actually stood the chance of not getting relegated. They still got relegated, and they're back in Vers League on a technicality. Let's put it that way. 
but yeah it's just it's just weird and even the the last game where they won over Valmier not last but the one before in round uh, 6 um in the press conference he said that he had to ask uh, the club general manager to speak to players so you can see that there's real issues with authority that that he has in the squad uh, in terms of Valakari, I just want to clarify it. I don't think he should go. I like him. I think I like the diversity he brings into the into the mix. But if you're looking at how this results as uh, you know someone maybe who has higher ambitions, you know they are in seventh place of the last five games. They lost two and drew three. It's just not looking great. Yeah. And then the last game, which took place today. Uh, Rig FC against Meta, and uh, for the second time, quite a convincing 4-0 victory for Riga. Of course, there's things to talk about, but all in all, not that much, because I guess, well, some might have thought that maybe Meta have some chance against Riga, but I think this is still a very logical result to be ex- expected, and uh, I think Riga, even though they had some maybe a bit of outliers, for example, against Dogapul, still proving to be the most consistent team. Maybe up there with Liepai, because Liepai is, in a weird way, consistent. You know, getting the results when perhaps they're not showing the football, they should be showing to get those results. Uh, but Riga just, uh, well, just very good. Uh, I don't know what more to say about them. Convincing 4-0 victory, scored early on, early on in the game, when the fourth, fourth minute already. Seems that their squad is also just solid, more or less figured out. Maybe some players that I don't know, might get in place of others. Yeah, just a good 4 0 victory. And uh, I want to start by saying that I'm very happy to see Mar- uh, Marco Regge, the Latvian striker, really getting in goals and assists. I think he got an assist last game. This game he got a goal and an assist. And uh, yeah, just really good to see. He's now moved into the Joined first place in terms of top scorers in the league with Jibril Gay, who's well not going to play anymore this season. So looking good for Exit to sort of try and challenge for the top scorer this season. And uh, yeah, other goals scored by Niang and also Reginaldo Ramirez with a lovely, lovely back heel finish. Just the placement couldn't be any better. And uh, yeah, it just seems that Riga are finding their sort of style of play. Players have gelled together and. Uh, the most important part is where that they can keep up the consistency and the convincingness in their wins. And uh, on the other hand, Meta weren't also bad this game. They had some chances and some players were really surprising me. Uh, for example, number two, uh, the right back Gabriel Skirkils. Um, I think he had a shaky game against the Algava two rounds ago. But this game, there were a couple of times where he joined the attacks and somehow managed to, in a very nice way, get past. Mortala, the left back of, of Riga, which has been one of the best left backs this season, and created some chances. That's where, uh, well, all due respect to Purinch, uh, in the game where he hasn't done much to do, being ready for those rare chances that Meta gets and uh, managing to save them. And uh, yeah, I think just just adds to the quality that Riga has. Uh, it seems that their squad is, sort of, as I said, figured out. Yeah, well, it will be interesting to see what their next. Uh, sort of trip up is and against who as there was against Dogopoulos with the draw but other than that looking good and Meta again they didn't play bad it's just the other team was a better team and that's pretty much it also some changes for Meta as well this season I think Carlos Vilnius got, their, got his first start or even maybe his first game today and uh, some players who don't really play that much as well Thomas Zantz Chinyayevs uh, got their game time in the goalkeeper as well, Parpionovs in, 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 instead of Bex. Yeah, all in all, just a good rig victory. What can you say? Yeah, uh, I was gonna point out the goalkeeper swap that first time uh, I think the season Bex is not starting, uh, which is probably well deserved given that he has been looking a little bit shaky. Parfionovs, despite conceding four, I think looked all right this game. In many ways, this is something similar to what we saw in the previous round against Supernova. Even the pattern of goals scored is is similar. Uh, So 8 goals now for Riga in 2 games. Very impressive attacking display. 
also can just echo what you said about Regja. Great to see him actually being highly competitive as a, as a starting attacker for Riga. Other than that, I mean, like you said, Meta didn't play bad. The game game wasn't that that one sided. If you consider possession, if you consider attacking efforts, Meta Meta weren't you know they didn't park the bus and just wait to you know for the final whistle to to survive. Not at all. They were attacking. They were uh, they were playing football. It's great to see. Possession is not that different. 55% for Riga versus 45% for Meta. But, I mean, Riga is just a team that has so much more quality and so much more depth in every position. 33 shots, 11 on target. So, whilst not a dominant display, as was against Supernova, still very, very confident and very uh, deliberate win, scoring four goals. Two in first half, two in second half. And that last one by Reginaldo Ramirez, yeah. Cross from the right, a beautiful back heel into the into the far corner. Just just beauty. I think that goal summarizes the game. That a lot of skill, a lot of quality, but just very nice and gracious. Yeah. Uh, some things I want to point out, first of all, is for Meta. Uh, some players that I think have been really consistent and looking good this season. Uh, well, one specifically, I think, is Usman Sal in the in the middle, uh, one of the few uh, foreign players that Meta has. I think he's been he he's been really really good, and uh, even though again conceding four goals today, he managed to break up a lot of play from uh, from Riga and uh, sort of did some nice moves in the midfield, as I remember. And uh, yeah, he's looking uh, real solid, and I wouldn't be surprised if. Uh, some uh, bigger teams in which they could try and grab him in the summer transfer window. Um, so yeah, and uh, Korea also not looking too bad, but this game, well, without much attacks, it's hard to really prove something. And for Riga, yeah, what what what, what I really like to see is that even in the end of the game, when it was already 3 or 4 nil, uh, the players still doing their best to, to, to just play as good as they can and fighting. There was a moment in, in front of Riga's goal where there were a lot of like shots from Meta that were either saved or blocked, just a scrappy moment in the box. And uh, the the Riga still players just putting themselves on the line. Uh, I think Yurkovskis in the in that little scrappy moment uh, blocked two shots with the incredible tackles. And uh, it just shows that even though they know they they have won the game, they're still trying to get the clean sheet, doing the best they can to do it. I already mentioned Purinc with some saves. Uh, there was a very good one in the last minute of the game, where Meta got a free kick, uh, which Wapne took, and it was a very good free kick. The ball was uh, moving into the top top corner, and uh, Purinch managed to jump and save it. Uh, even in the dying seconds, when the game is done, still showing this class and uh, keeping up the consistency and workload. Very good, and uh, seems that Stipich is doing what we're expecting him to do. And... Uh, yeah, just need to see more of Riga in 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 the bigger games, and the, well, even the the next game against Valmier will be uh, a good show off. But okay, well, I'll probably comment on that later. Yeah, yeah, no, Stipich certainly reaffirming his status as probably the best coach in Virsliga, certainly in my eyes. Riga looking like a solid team. There's really no areas that are more outstanding than others, and equally there's no areas that are more deficient than others. It's a very, very solid uh, squad. I'm a little bit concerned about Niang. Kind of seems to be looking a bit... Uh, I don't even know how to put it, but he did let his ego get the best of him in the Riga derby. And just looking at his body language on the field today just looks a bit arrogant. Especially there, there was this issue, this um, uh, episode towards the end of the game where Riga were taking a corner. He just kind of very casually just walked off, and then once the play resumed, just continued walking around, just going for a stroll in in the park, really. And um, Stipich did allude to this after that red card that he might have some uh, oversized ego. But he's still an excellent player, scored a goal, 
So I guess it just adds to the to the dynamism of uh, of the game. Meta did look like they're gonna get a consolation goal towards the end, but uh, but they didn't, unfortunately. That, that would have been, I think that would have been a fair outcome. They they didn't look like a team that should go down four nil, but they did, and that's uh, and that's football. So that was uh, round eight. Yeah. Goal of the round eight. Well, we're gonna do goals. Uh, goal of two rounds, it's round seven and eight, because we don't want to make our lives easier. I thought I, I thought we were doing. I thought we were doing separately this time. You want to do separately? I, I thought that I, I thought that's what. Okay, well, I, I'm not sure. I think I, in in some sense it would make sense, but on the other hand, we can do one. So the candidates for goal of rounds. Uh, Seven and eight are Tiedenberg with his wonder goal in round seven for Lepe against Tukums. Uh, Meltis, uh, round eight, Tukums versus Auda. Uh, Reginaldo, the goal that we just spoke of. Uh, Riga versus Meta. And Jaunzems for Valmiera versus Yelgova. This is, this is going to be difficult. So Tiedenberg's um, goal that uh, came from 25 meters out from right wing sailed over the keeper into the far top left corner. Really no stopping it. Highly spectacular. Uh, Maltius, a wonderful, very fighting effort where he uh, didn't lose the ball to an auto defender and, and managed to push bulldoze his way through pretty much the center and then a well placed shot after a nice one too by the way as well yeah he did a nice one too got the ball back touch and uh, yeah uh, reginaldo this wonderful back heel uh, off a cross from the right into the um, uh, far left corner and then yanzams uh, a couple of faint shots and then a real one to open up uh, yelgo a defense with like a bajillion players around him Oh well, yeah, I, for me, like a sort of a guilty pleasure is the Yaunzem's goal because uh, I think definitely not goal of the round, but uh, just the way he sort of showed his footballing intelligence and composure in the situation where three players uh, got uh, fooled, but he's one little little move, and just all of them sort of went blocking or t- tackling the shot, whatever, just were sent to the shops, and yeah, he got an easy. Well, not easy, but then more space for him to finish, uh, finish, finish his move eventually with a shot on target and a goal. Uh, so that's like more of a guilty pleasure. But for me, there's no doubt that the Brex uh, gets the goal of the round uh, because he definitely meant it. From such an angle to score from the right side with his right foot, he I think he the Rupert, he saw the uh, Wilkos being a bit not not even out of of the line. He was. Almost on the line, but he just placed it perfectly. The, the the trajectory of the ball, it seemed like it might be going over, and then it dipped, and even hit the left cro- uh, post, and then went in. It's just in- incredible. That's that's something uh, you rarely get to see in Vich League, this individual brilliance and this technique of the shot. And he has it in him, the Edenbergs, and uh, I think we might be seeing some nice goals from him uh, this season. Hopefully, at least. Uh, but yeah, it, it's just incredible, and it's rare to see. And for me, it's it's. Convincing. I agree. I agree. We've seen some lovely goals over these two rounds. Uh, we've seen many goals, but somehow that Tittenberg one, even though that was the first game of round seven, so long, long time ago, um, it's just it's something special. I think that might be a contender for even goal of the season. Uh, obviously, there's still a lot of season to go, but it's uh, it, it's not something you see every day uh, by any means. So if you want to see the goal, we're going to put a video of it up on Twitter. So go hit us up at LVFootball underscore show uh, to see that. Or obviously just go on YouTube and watch um, uh, replay. They're all up there. Uh, available on the Virsliga uh, YouTube channel. 
I don't think we're gonna do predictions because we don't yet know if we're gonna do next round as just one round or if it's gonna be a composite episode again. Things are really speeding up and at this point it's it pretty much seems like there's a game almost every day. It, it, it can be a bit challenging to uh, to plan these things, but we talked about that uh, previously already. Um, in terms of next games, this is going to be uh, the final round of the first, well, I guess, the first circuit. I don't know, there's 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 four circuits in each season, so this is going to be the, the first one over. And what we're looking at is Supernova hosting Leopaya, Daugopils hosting Auda, a Yelgava hosting Tukums, then a small Riga derby with uh, Meta versus RFS uh, at uh, Meta, and then a very interesting matchup, Riga versus Valmira in Riga. And things get interesting from here because even though in the last game of the first circuit Valmira play Riga, in the first game of the next circuit they're gonna have to play RFS. So it's a real challenge for Valmira to show us what they're really made of by playing the two teams that are still undefeated and that occupy the top two spots in uh, the Virsliga table at the moment. So some very exciting times ahead and we're very much looking forward to seeing what happens. Oh, oh you said like no predictions. Just one, with not really a prediction, but a comment on uh, the, I think the biggest game next round, uh, Riga against Valmir. I think it's going to be very hard for Valmir because I know they're playing with Algelisco, one of their main key players this season. And seeing how good Riga are playing and also their home, uh, I'm I'm a bit worried for Valmir. And uh, yeah, this is the chance for Riga to prove what they're about as well. And uh, yeah, it's going to be tough, but nice, nice, nice games to see uh, coming up. And uh, yeah, hope to see more goals, more interesting results. And maybe not that many red cards as there were the last two rounds. Yeah, so we'll see what happens and then we're going to tell you all about it. So thanks for uh, listening and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.